it was, it precursed the lines. It was like, whoa, dad, are you serious? Okay. And crickets, like yeah. nothing. Cause it really wasn't that funny. Okay. Yeah. And so you we, know what it is? You're not that communication. You're not letting the audience know. Right. That they can laugh at you. Right. They're right. not mean. You got to let them know that they can laugh at you. That's right. And that right. line, whoa. Right. That doesn't make it me was think serious. I can laugh. Well, it's low, it's it's low energy. It's just it's not the right energy. vibe for what you're And they wanted for. me to go right into the line. So it was, whoa, dad, you can't be serious. Well, because they were worried that it wasn't right. getting a laugh. Right. So we yeah. did it two or three times. It wasn't working. So in between takes, when you have your live audience, they're constantly rewriting. So you get, sometimes they rewrite whole scenes. Oh, yeah. If they haven't done their job throughout the week, you know, and the, scene, and the scene's not good. Or sometimes it just doesn't, it just doesn't work. Anyway. False flag. Right, right, right. Yeah. So at any rate, they come in, you huddle around the around the I uh, love that moment. stage manager. Yeah, they all yeah, run yeah, in, yeah. and you right, know right. you got an audience waiting for you. It's like a football huddle. It's like yeah, a good feel. So cool. My guys, this is a good feel. This is yeah. Gonna, yeah. this is going to be the play. Yeah. Are you here's, taking it around here? Here's an alternative blocking? line for you. We're switching that block. Here's an alternative line for you. An alternative line for you. So I'll never forget it. Uh, you know, and Don Rio comes in, who created yeah, yeah, the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I love you. I love you, Don. He's an amazing, incredible genius for half hour. You know, and and he comes in. He says, Joe. You know, and I'm a kid, but like I love it because they don't treat you like a kid. Treat you like an adult. Yeah, Real, it's business, Joe, man. All right, so Stakes look, this is uh, this is not working. So here's what we're gonna do. Just we're gonna give you one shot. Try something different. And I was like, what do I try? He's like, just do whatever you want to do. Whatever comes naturally to you. Uh, if it doesn't work, we'll rewrite it. We, yeah. we just want to give it. Just forget everything we said all week. Yeah, because it's just messing right. you up at this point. Now, also, so. how, kudos to you because also as an actor, especially no, 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 this is stay on point. No, no, yeah, no, no, yeah. <laughs> No, that's too cool. <laughs> no, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just magnify something that Joe was about to do because in that situation, when a, a head authority figure on a show comes yeah. to you and basically says what you're doing is not working, and you've got one shot to uh, do it right, uh, it's just a lot of pressure. It is. I mean, it's, it's not. You're, you're th a lot of stuff. Well, going and I was head. told to do it this way. You know, it's like you got to so, stay in the game. Know, right? I know. Yeah. I got so, something. I didn't have a week. Sorry. To find another it. little det det oh, boy. detraction that I've never talked about as kids. Andy just kind of mentioned. There were high stakes in our generation coming there. up. That's like, remember, give joke. me a break, yeah. Joe. Do you remember how we did it on give me a break? Oh, yeah, dude, man. There was no seven and four year old in the room. No, there was not. There was it not. was adult. If time. we didn't get to that table where you didn't kill it. Lions who was the gone. guy who did the the, the, the the creator and the director of that show? Hal Cooper. Hal Cooper. Rod Parker. Oh, my gosh. These, these guys, guys are famous. These guys, I know the names, but old these guys are man. old school legends. And, yeah. Sitcom. Worked on like Mary Tyler Moore show and Maude and, you know, they like, were yeah, big, they huge. they treat us like adults. They did. They like did. it or, or not. They we didn't even like get adults. to rehearse on sound stages in that show. Yep. No, they we would rehearse in rehearsal off. halls, yeah. and there was tape on the floor. They wanted to be fresh. So the and kitchen set would be dude, just tape and a out. table. Hold on, full circle. You pantomimed a lot. That's how a lot all week. A lot of like mocap and stuff is done now oh, for really? like in video games. Because oh. you do a lot of the video like, games. Yeah. So it's gone full circles. I did that when I first was like three, four years old, and then it disappeared for twenty five years. And then I walk into a sound stage where there's structures taped off. I'm like, oh yeah, no problem. Yeah, good to be back. Good to be back, baby. Good to be back, baby. But no, I have another little story quickly oh my about God. this. So you were talking about how, you know, it's you, they were treated like adults and this and that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm coming off of Brotherly Love. Uh, I get a call from a... Uh, brotherly Love? What the hell was that? I mean, got the show that we all had is boys. <laughs> it's kidding. A coming sitcom off of that we were all on. Yeah. Yeah. It's a sitcom we were all on. Michael Good. Jacobs, the creator of Boy Meets World, yeah. calls. Right. It says, Matt, uh, to whom, I guess my mom, I guess he called mom. Yeah. She was our manager at that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, he... You know, I really momager. Wanna, I, momager. Yeah. I really want to have uh, lunch with, um, you know, your son. You know, I want you to be there. So my mom and I, we had lunch with, with Michael. It was great. I what what I, the story was different? I really want to have lunch with you. I, yeah, I, I wanted to. Yeah. Call I wanted, mom. You know? <laughs> I mean, I've had those in this business as well. But yeah, yeah. Um, true. But uh, uh, we went to lunch and I was like, I don't know. I don't know. You know, I don't know, mom. The whole teen thing, you know. Because I watched Joe go through the massive teen thing, so I fought it hard. Yeah, you didn't want to have anything to do with it. I didn't want anything to do with the, the, yeah, the yeah. teenage thing, because I saw the teen just drop off into the oblivion of nowhere. And it's right, like, how right. do you do that young right. to they adult? They build you up only to break you down. To break it down. Yeah. So I was like, I don't want any, any parts of that. Yeah. So I was like, maybe I shouldn't do this Boy Meets World thing. Anyway, Mom, I got to give it to you. Thank you for insisting, literally insisting that I do Boy Meets World. Yeah. Because it's, it's become such a, a blessing for any actor to have that in their career. But the story is, I get on there. Now, I'm coming out of our family environment just to set the stage. So we have our own pace, our own way of doing things and this and that. I get on, and I think, I'm going to do what I've been doing my whole life. Get in there. It was a terrible first run-through for me. Yeah. And we have this thing called notes, these note sessions after the run-through. We sit down. 
Michael says, I got 161 notes. It's going to be a little bit of a long um, uh, session today. Probably like 45 minutes, so just and hang in there. Matt, they're all for you. No, exactly no. right. Oh, my God. Oh, really? Except one. There's only one other note that wasn't wow. to me. Wow. What? Yeah. He oh dressed God. me down. And a lot of people have talked I'm about this. I'm glad I was wearing boxer briefs. Wait, a lot of people have talked it? about this, about how, you know... He had a certain way of doing Maybe things. Maybe stand there in front of the whole crew. <laughs> what the he hell? He had a certain way of doing things. Who's me? <laughs> and for children, sometimes Jello it came shots. off as abrasive or whatever you want to say, right? But I got to tell you, I go in there, he dressed me down. I had the same reaction to it. I was like, I can't believe it in birth. But I got through that night. Yeah. I went in there the next day and I had an amazing run through. And I'll tell you why. It's because he didn't candy coat it, he didn't sugarcoat right. it. And that's the way it's been throughout the career. So, I actually wanted to thank Michael. Yeah. Because that dress down yeah. saved me I've from a few of those. Annihilation in front of the network. Yep. yep. Yeah. That's right. No, and that's true. saved me from annihilation on tape night. He, because I don't know if I would have gotten there if he didn't get he inside was, and take all the stuff that I've been doing on our show, get it out of there because it's a different timing, it's a different cadence, it's right. a different audience. Right. Different game. Right. Whole different, different, game. different, yeah. different game. And he taught me that. Listen. Different play thank you so much, yeah. Michael. I thanks for the experience. Yes, and I feel the same way about my experience in the shows and the people that I work for because it was accountability. They forced accountability. you to have it. Absolutely. It wasn't, they didn't make excuses for you. So yeah. They, yeah, they, they, Youth they, doesn't they, require excuses. They put it on your shoulders. It's teachable moments, but not excuses. Excuses just breed more mistakes. That's true. They you hold you responsible. take accountability, you can make yeah. changes. Okay. And here's and another point that I got to make, and I think... Because coming from us as kids, as Some point, when, when you're working as a kid, as you're there. working as a kid, once you reach about, if you've been lucky enough it's to really be working, obnoxious. once you reach about 11 or 12, I don't know if you've experienced this, but I know I've seen this a lot. Mm -hmm. Actors forget that they were on set at 11 and 11 to 12, and they yeah. look at these authority figures, I can't believe they talked to me that way. Right. It's like, you were a child. Right. They were being stern, and they were telling you what needed to be done as if right. a teacher or any other like a coach, like a, like coach. a good coach, like a good coach. Mm -hmm. We forget that we think that's true. Yeah. We think of ourselves as actors, as an adult. We weren't adults. That's why we're they not. were. That's why they treat us like a parent or a and yelled at us when we were acting off. Right. That's right. why that's right. we were kids. You were kids. kids, but they but being a kid still, you they they held you accountable and yes. and you were on the same level as adult because oh, the yeah. stakes were as high for that child as it was for the network exec as it was for the leads of the show. It right. was all everybody was on an even plane. Uh, which you would I lose love. your job. There is yeah, no age. Yeah, there is no age because kids would have like if kids well, didn't work. Well, if it doesn't work for the show and the audience isn't laughing or the audience doesn't like Look. it, whatever, then the show is not working, and then that's everybody's job. It's so, but back to responsibility and being held accountable. It was on your shoulders to do something different. Right. You were in the not, bottom yes. of the ninth. Right. Bottom of the ninth. Right. Had, two out. You right. had your surfer right. well not working. Right. So and the creator comes up to you as a child and says, right. "Dude, you know, right. so nicely you says, right, you got to just try something." He said, "I know we've been telling you to do it this week, all week, like." this but just do what you do if not we're just going to cut it and we'll find something else for yeah. you yeah okay which could so have been like, a disaster right. i mean who well, knows it, been, it certainly would have changed the whole character things. would not have popped the like the trajectory that. You know of the right? whole career yeah. could have right. changed right people really people were sc scream that across, you know uh, to this day at you across the streets oh, and stuff. back in the day and it was it's generational nuts. too but okay so go, like, it's on your shoulders generation cuz i got them yeah so it's on your shoulders anyway so and and i'll never forget the 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 scene was with one of my favorite people in the whole world, Ted Wass, who played oh, my yeah, dad. Yeah, the best. He lives in our neighborhood. I know he does. I, I see him every day. Yeah, 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 we got to get him on the show. Believe it or not, get him years, on the pod. Years the later, pod the pod, baby. The pod the pod. We will. Years later, when when Ted became a a like a amazingly incredible uh, uh, multi camera director, yeah, went on right. directed Spin City with Michael J. Fox. Amazing that. stuff. But yeah. also, I I was I was able. We were lucky enough to hire him to direct the pilot of Melissa and Joey. Very and cool. he got that show off to a good start. And then it became awesome. a big hit and ran for, you know, 100 plus episodes, right? Great. So at any rate, it was a scene with him and we had some of the best lines together. You did, you guys did. The we dung did. beetle, the dang beetle. Right. What is that? I've never yeah. forgotten no, that. No, how about this one though? Oh. How about this one? Uh, anyway, let me let, let me yeah, tell this yeah, story yeah, and, I'll, yeah, and I'll tell you yeah. something else because we'll my brain's up. racing. Yeah, but right. also, mine is too. By the way, I got like eight things to say. Talking about talking about Matt LeBlanc and about how those characters were so similar. Believe it or not, they were so similar and so inspired by one another that Matt LeBlanc had a Donald Duck no pants joke a season after I had a Donald Duck no pants no joke. No way! Yeah, for sure. Which is one of my favorite Because jokes, it was great. Yeah. It was like, Dad, can I ask you a rhetorical question? He was like, Joe, you know what a rhetorical question is, don't you? <laughs> he says, uh, it's one that you know the answer to. And I'm like, Dad, if I knew the answer, why would I be asking the question? What's your question, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so I was like, 
why doesn't Donald Duck wear pants? <laughs> Joe, he doesn't need pants because he has feathers. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, I literally like this. This is the, but the greatest line was the one coming up. And I was like, oh. He's like, <laughs> write it down this time. <laughs> this time? Yeah. You've asked this before. Time. That's this, the actual oh, right. Right. Okay. Write it that's, down this that's time. That's the joke. Yeah, that's okay. The, okay. That's love the, it. So, believe it or not, they had a version, an amalgamation of that right. joke. And Joey Tribbiani said a version of that later. Very anyway. Cool. All right. So, 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 so this was, was, right. Seema Ted. And I remember what it was. Like, like, it was like, whoa, dad, what are you saying? Okay. So he was saying something, giving me some girl advice he was always giving me, right? Like, why won't Becky talk to me at school? He's like, it's like, whoa, Dad, what are you saying, right? So I didn't know what to do. So he was great. And Ted was, you know, he was on soap. I mean, he was like, he was, he was like the veteran on our yeah, show. Yeah, we were yeah. all, you know, and and he said, listen, just don't think about it. Just do whatever comes to you. Oh, Ted did that yeah. too. Oh, cool. And I didn't I was know like, that. Because I was like, what, really I, cool. what, what should I do? He's like, very cool. Don't think about it. He said, look, you're a really funny dude. Just think of just don't think about it. So I walk in and I said, you know, dad, Becky wants to show me. I think it was like, Becky wants to make out with me or kiss me or right, go to second base. And he's mm -hmm. like, then you got to go to second base, right? Or something like that. Yeah. And, and without thinking about it, I literally went, whoa. And I stopped. Hey! And I stopped. He did it again. We got two. I didn't run the line together. Oh. And oh. I stopped and, and the, the audience, audience broke out. into oh. laughter. Oh. And we were sitting there and I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. Ted looked at me and he literally went like this. He went in the show. He literally went. Ah, like that. that's awesome. I love and those I moments. went. Thank you so much for watching this clip of the Brotherly Love Podcast. For full episodes, go to the Brotherly Love Pod's YouTube channel. Link in the description. And for exclusive weekly bonus content, join our Patreon right now. That's right. There's a link in the description for that, too. Thanks so much for tuning in. Thank you. Thanks.